Hi everyone, I'm April, and you're watching The Tangled Cat Speaks, and this is a book edition. So, I realized the last episode that I did on books, I never updated you all on my challenge to read 100 books before I buy any new books. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and st state that first thing. Um, I am up to 61 books read that I already own. So I'm past the halfway mark. Super exciting. Um, that means I only have, what, 39 left to go? Very, very happy about that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into what I read this last couple of weeks. Um, let's start with audiobooks. Um, the first one was Where the Crawdads Sing. I have been wanting to read this for a long time, but I have so many other things that I want to read that that one just kind of got left by the wayside. But I really, really wanted to watch the movie, so I went ahead and bumped some things off and put that in. I did it as an audio through my library. Where the Crawdads Sing is by Delia Owens, and it's um, kind of like a mystery. Um, a coming of age there's a whole lot of different things going on in there and oh my goodness it was such a good book I just did not expect to have all of the feelings that I had <laughs> it was so good and I immediately went back and watched the movie um, now this book is about a young girl a really young girl I want to say she's like seven at the very beginning um, she lives in this swampy backwoods kind of area and um was it set in like the 50s 60s when she's that young and she's I think it was the 60s no the 50s and then it time jumps between the 50s when she's really young and then the late 60s um so it kind of time jumps it shows how she was um living with you know her family and they're it's they're real poor their dad is an alcoholic and he's just losing money and they're not able to do any better for themselves and their mother decides that she wants to just take off and you get her reasons later on and then um there's four older siblings she's the the main protagonist um she's I can only think of her full name Catherine but I can't think of what they call her now in the book Kaya I think they call her Kaya anyway um, she's the youngest and her between her and the next oldest sibling there's seven years so all her siblings are really really older than her and soon after the mother leaves they all eventually take off and she's soon left alone as a seven-year-old with her alcoholic father who basically neglects her and then at some point he leaves and she's stuck there in this little shack of a home deep in the swamp with no money no means of taking care of herself um, she ends up finding ways to make it through and it's just this heartbreaking little story of this girl who's just abandoned and um, the government tries at some point to try to get her to go to school. They take her and she ends up there one day and runs away because all of the kids bully her because she's, she doesn't have any shoes. She's not, she's not dressed very nicely. She's obviously from the swamps and you know, they consider that a lower form of existence, I guess. So, um, it's just very sad. And then, um, it kind of, like I said, at times jumps to the future and in the future, somebody has been murdered and they're trying to figure out who did it so that that whole murder ties in with how she grew up because it talks about how she grows up as an abandoned child um so many emotions so good and the movie was done really really well it was you know there were a few things that were kind of turned around and changed a little bit but not a whole lot and um of course there are some things that are left out so if you haven't read the book, you don't miss them. But having read the book, I'm like, oh, I wish that was in there. But it was really, really good. I enjoyed it, and I wish I hadn't waited so long to get to it. Um, let's see. So the other audio that I did 
is called Ghost Goes to the Dogs, and that is by Cleo Coyle, which is the most recent installment in the Haunted book sh Bookshop or Bookstore Mystery. Now, this is the one that has, um, it's a cozy mystery, so it's amateur sleuth, and it's got the one woman who owns a bookstore. Um, she runs it with her um, her aunt, but it's haunted by a ghost of a detective from the 1940s. And um, he's able to sort of, only she can talk to, he can like talk to him in her mind. Um, and sometimes she forgets and she speaks out loud and people are looking at her like, what are you doing? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Um, and in this one, you know, she's she's got to figure out what um, what is going on with a woman who is murdered and her son ends up having to or not having to, but he offers to take care of her dog and kind of foster it until they can find it a new home. And so, she, of course, she ends up in this in the middle of this mystery. She's got this detective running around in her head, helping her solve crime, solve the crime. And um, it's really light. It's really fun. I really like these kind of mysteries. Um, very much enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, it's the newest in the series. So I'm happy I'm caught up on that, but now I'm excited and I want to get to the next one. <laughs> so that's it for audios. Um, now, ebooks. Let's do ebooks next. We'll start with the two that I didn't own. Um, and these are two more in the short story collection. Um, that I'm reading off of um, Prime on my Kindle. And um, they're very short science fiction stories. And the first one is called Emergency Skin. And this one was by N.K. Jemison, I think you say it. And this one was interesting. It, it talks about um, human like creatures I think they they used to be human and they kind of evolved and it's it's way in the future they're in space and they are coming back down to earth they're sending someone down to earth this person is kind of um, an AI type um, creature like a robot kind of thing um, and it has skin um, they call it emergency skin because he's got like a protective coating that they call their skin. He definitely looks not human, but they're just sending him down there to kind of recon the area that they're sending him down to to get some information. Um, from what I understand, humanity was supposed to have died off and they're sending him, sending this robot AI guy creature to... Um, check out what's going on and he comes across people who have survived whatever um, catastrophe was supposed to have happened and he's remotely connected to the people who sent him down so he can they're kind of talking to him and directing him what to do I keep saying him but it's an it anyway um, and they're like this isn't possible how can there be people alive and he you know you should make contact and you should do this and you should do that and you know don't get too close to them they're they're this that and the other thing and basically feeling the mind of this ai that humanity as it was left on that planet is inferior to what they've become now um and so it goes on you know it's a very short story i don't want to give too much more away but it's it's very interesting the the realizations that this ai comes to discover um, very short but it was very 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 interesting um, again had a really good time with it I like having these short ones to read like let's say I can't fall asleep wake up at one in the morning and I'm just like wide awake so I'm, I'll read one of these little short ones it's this one was how much was this one this one was only 38 pages so I went by super super quick and I really enjoyed it and it's also really nice that I'm doing these short stories because I'm learning a little bit about how some of these authors write and um, I'm really enjoying finding this out. That way I can know whether or not I want to read some of their longer works. Um, the next one that I did was called You Have Arrived at Your Destination. And this one was by Amor 
towels. Um, oh, excuse me, my nose is itching. Ugh, I hate allergies. Sorry about that. Um, so this one was about 54 pages. Again, very, very short. And um, this one involves a couple who can't, or they're thinking about having a child, but they're wanting to have, make sure that it's genetically modified in a way that they find acceptable. And this company that they're going to, well, actually the wife went without him and did a whole bunch of talking with them and doing stuff that he didn't even know about until the last minute when it was his turn to go. And he did his um, a donation of DNA, I should say. <laughs> so, you know, he gives a sample and um, what, they're, what they do is not only, you know, check for genetic issues and illnesses and stuff like that that they could hopefully correct they also try to um modify behavior so that based on some sort of algorithms that they have set up so that they can potentially direct how this child is going to grow up it's kind of a nature versus nurture thing and um yeah there's a whole lot of insight to the, to what he's he's like my wife agreed to this um and he's like i don't know this sounds you know this sounds a little crazy he goes through the whole spiel and then there's some revelations at the end that he's just gotta come to terms with so it's really really interesting on the whole nature versus nurture and you know genetically modifying your children that's that's a little much for me but it was a very very interesting story um, okay, so now we're down to the ebooks that I actually owned or had purchased. Um, it's weird to say owned when I don't actually have them. They're just somewhere in the cosmos. <laughs> uh, but the first one was um, Evil Under the Sun by Agatha Christie. And this is one of, I would say, one of my top three or maybe top five of the Agatha Christie books. Um, I've read this one so many times and I enjoyed reading it again especially after some of the more heavier books that I read, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, very, um, ugh, what's the word? It's a murder mystery. It's a, a, you know, a bunch of people that are out on a, on a vacation and there's Hercule Poirot in the midst of it. And, um, you know, he's, he's noticing all the, the way that people interact over there, but a woman is found dead on the beach. She's married, but she's kind of the the woman that all the men desire. And there's one particular man who's also married, and they're both there with their spouses. And there's one particular man um, in an argument with his wife because she's jealous of this woman, and he hasn't admitted to her that he knows her from the past. And there's this whole big old thing going on. And, of course, this woman ends up dead, and it's up to Hercule Poirot to figure out who and why. I love these Agatha Christie mysteries and all of the different little details that she just throws in and then you just are kind of like, oh, that's cool, like how she figured that out. I enjoy these books so much. And again, this is one I've read several times and I had a very good time rereading it now for the summer. <laughs> um, and actually that's one of those places that I would like to go visit and I can't remember the name of the location right now, but it just sounds so fun to just go sit in this little resort kind of place and just go hang out on the beach and you can row to the to a little another kind of little inlet and there's a cave and all that it's just I just love the different places that Agatha Christie takes me to <laughs> and then the next or the last ebook that I read these past couple of weeks is um, White Fang so um, that's by Jack London I had never read this one um, and I was very surprised to see that most of the book takes place through the perspective of this wolf-dog hybrid. Um, it's very, very interesting. It starts off through the POV of some men, and there's an animal hunting them. 
And then it, the perspective changes and you get to the perspective of this young pup. And then at the end, it goes back to the POV of the humans, but it's, yeah, I was very surprised to see that. And it was, it's just basically about his, how he sees the world and how he interacts with other animals, including um, the other wolves in the pack. Um, how he realizes that his mom is different, but he doesn't understand why she's different. Um, how he interacts when when he does finally end up encountering humans. Um, and just all of the different things that he goes through. And it's a very emotional kind of book, I would say. I mean, it's there's some sad parts, some really brutal parts. Um, but there's also some kind of silly, especially at the beginning when he's still a pup, there's some funny parts. It's it's a really nice story, and I'm glad that I read it. Um, I think the next one that I want to read at some point this year is Call of the Wild. I know that there's some other, I have some other short stories by Jack Lennon, but I really wanted to get the big three out of the way. And recently I did, um, what's the one on the boat? Sea Wolf. And then now I did White Fang, and then the next one will be Call of the Wild at some point this year. And let's get to the physical books. Now, I actually owned two physical books that I read, but I don't have them anymore because I've already donated them to Little Free Libraries in the area because the Little Free Libraries had some other books that I wanted and I wanted to trade them out. I didn't want to take books without leaving something, so I put those. So let's start with those two. The first one is The Things They Carried. Now this is the one that I told you was quite heavy. Um, the Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien is um, a collection of short stories that are somewhat like a memoir of the author, but He's also made them so that they're kind of, um, how do you say, kind of embellished so they're sort of more fictionalized. Um, so it's not like a true memoir, um, but it's based on some of his experiences and some of the people that he met or was um, with in Vietnam. and. It was very, very brutal. It's it's very short. It's only, um, what is it, 246 pages, but it took me a long, it took me this entire two weeks to get through it because um, I kept having to put it down every few chapters. And it, there's some chapters that are really um, kind of funny and even sweet, but there are some that are just he holds nothing back when it comes to the violence and the, the brutality of being in Vietnam during that war and some of the things that they experienced, some of the things that they did themselves. It was just very, very tough to read, especially having a, my, my father went, went to Vietnam and I had heard a lot of stories from that end. So it was just very, very heartbreaking very scary and chilling and it just took me a long time to read it was very very heavy which is why I needed some of those lighter things and some of those um, cozy cozier things like the Agatha Christie that I've read a million times um, I just needed something to comfort me every in between some of these dark dark passages but it was very well written even though there was a lot of brutality and gore and violence it was still very well written. I wouldn't say that I regret reading it, but I will never read it again, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, it was a good book, and I think it should be read, but it's definitely not one of those that I would ever return to, at least not anytime soon. <laughs> um, and let's see. So the other one that I owned was called... It's actually got a longer name, and I can't think of how it all goes, but it's How to Survive... A Sharknado. <laughs> Again, like I said, I needed things that were going to make me laugh. 
um, and this definitely did it was when I found it in a free library a while back and I decided I was gonna go ahead and and read that um, and it's basically it's it's like a survival guide um, but it's a parody of a survival guide of that if you could get that through your head it's it's so funny like it has the sharknado and how, how to avoid it and how to survive it and um, they talk about sharknadoes and there's all different kinds of monster creature things um what was there was a a bat a clism <laughs> these giant bats just come and start taking people snatching them up just that it's just this funny play on words and creating emergency situations out of them and then it lists it lists it like it would in a in a survival guide with the do's and the don'ts and the how to avoid and how to survive and what kind of things you might need to prepare for that situation and different little anecdotes and fake history um, um, research on the whole subject it was and each one is only about three maybe four pages long a real short and you just kind of flip through it and it's got these cute little um, pictures um, I can't there were so many of them I can't think of them all right now but the, it's hilarious there was like a an ant what was it called an ant quake I think it was because <laughs> the ants are so big oh no it was a arachna quake because they were the spiders are so big that it creates it creates earthquakes I mean it was just hilarious and I had so much fun with it and it was just really nice to just have something super super silly um, let's see so one of the other physical books that I read was one that I got from the library and that was volume 13 in the Vinland saga manga series that I had been I've been reading for a while now and we finally got the most current which is number 13 and I read that and I zipped right through it I think it took me maybe an hour to read it um, I really am enjoying some of the manga that I have been getting to. I really want to get back to Attack on Titan, but that one just started to get really heavy and I was like, oh, I don't know. I still have about 10 volumes left to go in that, but someday I'll get back to it. But I'm caught up on Vinland Saga now. I think there's going to be another volume, but that's not going to be for at least a year. And the only physical book that I have to show you <laughs> <laughs> in hand is a library book um, and this is called Isunboshi and it's um, a really fun graphic novel by Ryan Lang and I love the cover it's so cool this is what drew me to it on the shelf because it was it wasn't sitting where you just see the spine it was kind of displayed where you see that and I thought oh that looks so pretty um, I wish the whole thing was like that but it's in black and white but it's and it actually kind of looks, you know, the way that it's drawn, it kind of look, they kind of look like, like, uh, Disney characters. Like, it looks really silly and like it would be for children, but it's actually kind of quite adult. Now, what I understand, this is, I, I did a little bit of research after I read it. This is based on a Japanese, um children's story and it was one that stuck with him and now that he's an adult he decided to make this graphic novel and it follows a it starts off with this couple who wish and wish and wish and wish for a child and they never one never comes in they never have a baby and then um there's this these gods well they're kind of like demons they're called oni and then there's the the these um, bigger gods, and they they have this this power, and they separate. They have the three parts of this blade, three parts of this god's power are are put into this blade, and then the blade is broken into three pieces, and it's scattered all around. And then the fourth part is basically the soul or the spirit, and that they're like, where are we going to hide this? So they end up finding this couple who's wishing for a child and they put the spirit into a child however 
in their prayer for children, they said um, we would even, it was like a little rhyme, something about um, wishing for the something or something. So badly that they want a son that they did not care if he was no bigger than a thumb. And that's exactly what they got. They got a new little baby just magically appeared in their praying hands and he was the size he was a little baby the size of a thumb and he never really got much bigger he stayed really really small let me see if I can find a picture of him really small compared to somebody normal size um, so and that he doesn't know that he's this spirit he doesn't know anything he just knows that he's actually kind of strong for being as little as he is and um, <laughs> that's the little baby <laughs> and um, so he ends up fighting these demons and stuff and figuring out what you know what his purpose is where's one of the other there's some really really cool illustrations in here just just beautiful I was just yeah here's one so this is one and this is the an, an older man that he meets and this is him down here this is Isun Boshi down here so that's how small he is but it's just so beautiful the way that it's it's illustrated like the the it's black and white but the the the, the light and the dark and the they can make like the rays sunlight rays through the trees just looks so like this little this little right here like you could see the sun rays I just I love how it was illustrated I believe he did his own illustration Ryan Lang um, I think so yeah he did the, his own illustration um, there are a few color pages at the back just kind of like little extras are not really part of the story but I, it would have been nice if this whole book was like that because it's just so pretty. But even in black and white, it's it's stunning. Really, really had a good time with this. And that's about it. That's all I read these past couple of weeks. I'm in the middle, a little more than halfway through the um, the Scarab Path, which I think is the fifth book or the fourth book in the. Shadows of the Apt series by Adrian Tchaikovsky that I'm slowly reading. I'm probably not going to finish that series till the end of the year, but I'm very much enjoying it, and I will talk more about that one next time. I appreciate you coming and spending a little bit of time with me and listening to me ramble on about the books that I've gone through, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>